characteristics. I want you to notice something. When this young man responds, Mark says in verse 21, and Jesus, looking at him, loved him. It is so easy to love somebody with good qualities. But you see, God looks at the heart. It's not just these external qualities that Jesus is seeing. Jesus is seeing a guy whose heart is in the right place. And he loves him because his heart is right. This young man, if we go to Matthew's gospel, I'm not going to go back there, but the parallel passage, Matthew records this in Matthew 19 and 20. Matthew's gospel records a little bit differently. The young man in Matthew's gospel asks a question. What, I, what do I still lack? I think it's the way it's worded. I think I've got a typo on the screen. Um, your King James Version will render it, what lack I yet? Okay, this young man knew there's still something missing in his life. He's honest enough with himself to know, I'm not perfect. I've got all these qualities, I've kept the Old Testament law. But he's good enough to know that he's not perfect. What this young man lacked was a personal, a very personal relationship with Jesus. He's on the verge. He's on the verge of this very personal relationship with Jesus. And he also lacks obedience to Jesus. A willingness to yield to Jesus. In Matthew chapter 19, verse 20, Jesus said, If you would be perfect... Luke says, you lack one thing. There's one little item missing in this young man's life. What is it? Jesus says, go, sell all that you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. Now there's a very sad ending to this. And you know what? I don't mean to... I, 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 I hate sermons like this with sad endings. I like happy endings. But this is a reality. I can't count on both hands and probably both feet the number of young people that I've had in Bible class who have gone away sad, left the church disappointed because there's something that they're not willing to give up. They're not willing to yield to Jesus. They're not willing to follow Jesus because, see this young man, he came to Jesus. He had a willingness to follow Jesus. He just wasn't ready mentally and emotionally and spiritually. He wasn't ready for what Jesus saw that was holding him back. There's one thing in his life that's more important to him than Jesus. Now, we may not have money. Um, is there one thing, ask yourself this, is there one thing in your life or is there a multitude of things that might be holding us back from following Jesus like we should? This is a question I've wrestled with myself. Recently, well, in the last couple of years, I was approached by a couple of different families from different states, Alabama being one of them. Would you consider coming to Alabama? No. 
my initial reaction, no, I'm not going to Alabama. I'm not moving to Alabama. I like where I'm at. And I've had to ask myself, is, is that my weakness? Is there something that I am, I am more attached to the middle high valley mud than I am to Jesus? Question. This young man was more attached to something else than Jesus. I want to go back here to Matthew chapter 10 for a moment. And I want you to see something here. In Matthew chapter 10 and in verse 33. Matthew 10, 33, but whoever denies me before men, I will deny before my Father who is in heaven. What this young man does at the end of this story, this account, is to go away sad, to deny Jesus the right into his life. Do you ever wonder why this man has no name? Do you ever wonder why the rich man in Luke chapter 16 has no name? I want to introduce you to an idea that neither of these men are named because God does not know them. They come up to God and he has no knowledge of who they are. They never knew God. This rich young man had something in his life that was keeping him from knowing God on a very personal level. Building a relationship with Jesus through obedience to what Jesus required of him. Kept him from having a, from really knowing Jesus. It's kind of like the President of the United States. We know who he is. But we don't have a knowledge of him. We don't really know him. I don't have a personal relationship with the President of the United States. And so if I were to go up to if I were to go up to the President and I were to shake his hand and say, Hello, sir, it's yeah, I, do you remember me? He'd say, No. I don't know who you are. Because I don't know him and he does not know me. Look here at 1 Corinthians chapter 8. The Apostle Paul says that one of the most important things in a Christian's life is to know God. 1 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 3. Paul is talking about idols. How an idol has no power over an individual who knows God. He says, but if anyone loves God, he is known by God. If anyone loves God, he is known by God. In other words, if I love God, God knows me. I am not just a descriptive nature. The Bible assigned this young man a description. A rich, young ruler. The Bible does not assign him a name. Because he is not known by God. Because he loved something else more than Jesus. Every person going to heaven is in a relationship with God. Through obedience to what God asks of us. Now, God has not asked of us what the rich young ruler was required. What if, what if God clearly stated, as he does, let's, let's, let's look for just a moment. This is what God requires of us. Mark chapter 16. We're almost there in our Bible readings. Mark chapter 16. What does God require of us? Does he require us to sell everything that we own and give it to the poor? 
No. No, I don't believe he does. He says in verse 15, he said to them, to his disciples, go into all the world and proclaim the gospel, the good news to, er to the whole creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. Whoever does not believe will be condemned. You see, that's, that's what Jesus requires of us. What if someone were to look at Jesus and go away sad because, because they don't want to get wet? Does that happen? I can tell you seriously it does. It does happen. But when we build our relationship with Jesus, according to being willing to do what he asks of us, Jesus knows us and we know him. 